Hey, MLS listing subscribers. Thanks for tuning in to our second episode under this new podcast channel of our Realtor Affairs, where we, we really look at uh, exactly that, Realtor Affairs, Realtor Hot Topics, um, any issues out there. We did our first episode with Victor Gomez, who's the GAD of uh, Santa Cruz County Association of Realtors, and we're thrilled today to have Fernando Pena, um, who is the GAD, the Government Affairs Director for SAMCAR, uh, San Mateo County Association of Realtors. Fernando, how are you doing today? Uh, good afternoon. I'm doing great. Good to see you, Dave. Good to see you. Thanks for so much for coming on. Um, you know, we we really wanted to kind of use this channel to to not only inform our agents, you know, what what the hot topics out there, but also to hopefully, um, you know, build the support and engagement that's so crucial for them uh, to come on out. So I know uh, Fernando, you you started out what two, January 2022 as the government affairs director sure. for SAMCOR? Um, and so, I, I tell you, give us a little bit of your background before you before you came over and uh, took the role over here for the GAD. Sure, uh, I've been in uh, government affairs for about twenty years. Uh, I worked in private industry. I worked for uh, several companies as a director of government affairs, in-house government affairs, um, internal lobbyist. I represented the financial services sector and online uh, lending sector in the pawn industry for the last 20 years prior to coming to um, Samcar. Fantastic. Nice. Yeah, I do. You know, two things stood out to me when I kind of looked uh, looked you up. And one is that you've actually were responsible for a passage of like five, four or five state legislation bills in, in four state capitals. So you, you definitely have some experience at, at, at the state level as well. Um, and uh, Santa Clara University. <laughs> so I'm gonna. We're both alums of Santa Clara University, so I had to do a shout out to Santa Clara. There, I knew. I knew I liked you. <laughs> uh, That's right. Go Broncos. So uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, Santa Clara was a wonderful experience for me. I was happy to have had the opportunity to go to that university. And um, you're right. It's uh, an opportunity that presented itself over the years to work in government affairs and. Um, and, and, you know, Fernando, as the, and I should mention that just for I know we kind of touched on it on our first episode, but just for some of those agents or realtors that might have you know missed that one or are are, are kind of a little bit unsure of what the GAD role is, right? So, so you basically are you know you pursue Samcar's legislative agenda, right, at the local and state levels, um, which is really for, to preserve and protect private property rights. Is that kind of one of the main tenets? That's correct. Um... I'm the director of government affairs for Sam Carr. It's really it's a trade association representing 3,000 realtors and, and affiliate members here in San Mateo County. I address all the public policy issues impacting the real estate industry, and and really my goal is to work to ensure that Sam Carr is a credible voice for realtors and for housing providers and our affiliate members. I advise the board of directors. I work with our association executive. Um, I promote uh, political candidates for office and maintain strong uh, working relationships with community partners and local county, state, and federal elected officials. And the way I look at my my duties is uh, local lobbying, uh, testifying at hearings, monitoring legislation, member mobilization. Uh, I know that you want to talk a little bit more about that a little later, but coalition building, uh, content writing, research, and staffing our three um, government affairs committees. I also serve as the political liaison to our state and national trade associations, um, updating our membership on rele relevant state and federal political issues. But I wanted to get back to what you were talking about earlier about my background uh, when you mentioned my passing the five uh, state legislative bills and four state capitals. And my role over the years for other uh, organizations has been state and local. And in my previous worlds, I had the opportunity to uh, pass state legislation. And that means, you know, really building relationships with um, the chairpersons of, uh, say, for example, uh, state banking committees, uh, an assembly or uh, state senate, worked with committee consultants and lobbied uh, state assembly members and state senators. Uh, but I always have the responsibility of working locally as well, working with mayors and council members on local issues, uh, maybe addressing a local ordinance, for example, rules and regulations. And in my role here at SAMCAR, 
I focus primarily on uh, local ordinances, rules, and regulations, but really keep an eye on uh, the state and federal uh, political issues as well. Fantastic. You know, if, uh, so Fernando, you know, uh, kind of building on, on, on the importance of, you know, one thing, one thing we talked about in the first episode is kind of the importance of realtor engagement and support, right? Um, uh, and, and just for realtors being informed. So, you know, I'd say the first, let's take a look at some of, uh, you know, some of the local, definitely at the, at the local level here, um, importance of, of really of getting realtors out there and, and, and helping you advocate, right? I know on your website, I saw, you know, I really liked how you guys have it. Basically, um, you, on one, one of the pages that basically comes down to, you know, oppose, support, and inform, right? And, and I think you guys have, you guys kind of list what it goes. And a lot of it's under the umbrella of, you know, protecting realtors' ability to do business, um, you know, and protecting, you know, obviously uh, property rights. But uh, one of the one of the examples I think of great examples was the uh, Millbrae vacancy tax, right? That was I think just in May of this year, um, and that one you guys uh, defeated. Now that was a I'm not sure if uh, if uh, many many realtors realize kind of how the procedure works, but that was an actual study session, right, at the council level where they're kind of talking about bringing it onto their agenda. Um, but, and uh, that's right, and, and it really. Um, Thank you for the question. I mean, uh, Millbury was an excellent example of real true engagement where uh, my role in as a government affairs director is to mobilize members when we see uh, issues that could impact their business. And uh, realtors really uh, got out there. They testified at the committee. They took the time to send in emails to the council members um, and came to the council meeting um, to pushed back on this home vacancy tax, which we felt was not needed. They, we really focused more on the data. You know, they didn't have the data to support such a broad reaching uh, ordinance. And you're absolutely right. What we wanted to do, our goal was to stop it at study session level before it went to the council, before and before the council uh, thought about maybe placing it on a ballot. Uh, so we were able to avoid not only a, a costly campaign, but we were also able to protect housing providers and homeowners in Millbrae from costly fees and taxes that they might have been looking at. So it's a great uh, victory, a great win for uh, realtors and for homeowners. Um, so that was a good example. Yeah, I think it went down all, all five council members, even the mayor who I think introduced it, right, <laughs> voted against it. So you guys obviously were persuasive. And I love the fact that Sam Carr Realtors came out there and supported you, right? Um, and obviously they were heard. So, you know, it's just a great example. Another one I, I saw was the, uh, I think Sam Carr and CAA, the California Apartment Association, teamed up uh, to stop a, a, a county ordinance. I think it was a, uh, a county tenant uh, ordinance, right? County tenant protection ordinance, uh, which I, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but I, I think some of the words I read was deeply flawed. Uh, sure. uh, and, and I did take a look and yeah, a lot of, that would have added a lot of regulations, uh, increased legal fees, financial compliance costs. But, um, you know, another example uh, of, of you guys basically advocating fighting against it and, and that was stopped as well, right? It was. Um, it, we were happy to team up with the California Department Association. We had some other coalition members. It was, as you mentioned, a deeply flawed uh, proposed regulation. And, you know, for example, they had local just cause provisions that exceeded state law AB 1492 requirements. And we were able to, um, you know, demonstrate that that to them and also to staff that uh, there already is existing state law addressing just cause provisions. Uh, provisions. They also wanted relocation payments that triple the amount a housing provider would um, would spend for recovering their unit. And they were also talking about such things as anti-harassment provisions that redefine harassment to include operational procedures and noticing requirements as prescribed by law in at least five different languages. Uh, and of course, the housing providers were expected to pay for that. Um, and then so, there was something in there called the fair chance regulation, uh, mandating strict requirements to follow when considering a re rentals applicant with criminal history. Um, so again, we were able to 
approach was that we just wanted to educate. You know, we wanted to share information. We wanted to share data with the members of the board. Um, and they took the time to uh, look through the data that we presented, the information that we had. And at the end of the day, um, they did vote uh, against it and uh, voted uh, to not only vote in July, uh, the original proposal was presented uh, prior to the July 4th uh, weekend, and um, they wanted a vote a couple of weeks later without any outreach to housing providers. That was another thing that we uh, pushed back on, that if you're going to impose a, such a uh, far-reaching ordinance on the most impacted constituency, housing providers, then you need to include them in your discussions. And, and I think uh, at least three of the council members, I mean, three of the county board of supervisors understood that there was uh, no or little outreach to housing providers, that there's possible litigation, uh, and of course, uh, potential impacts to uh, small mom and pops who, uh, you know, would have to incur a lot of these compliance costs. So it was um, a, a good opportunity to work with the, the board of supervisors, and it was it was a good uh, a good win for us. Yeah, you, you guys have been busy. <laughs> Here we have. I tell you, this is all this is all 2023, right? So, uh, just months ago, um, and, and like you said, education-wise, I mean, a lot of times everyone's busy and you know we've got their lives going on. But in terms of busy, if you if you didn't really, you know, you just mentioned a lot of little aspects, a few different aspects of of that um, ordinance, and you know, if you weren't paying attention, and if there weren't you know GADs like you and Sam Carr out there, you know, educating our realtors what's in these ordinances, um, you know, some of these things could 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 kind of get swept underneath the rug, kind of or, or kind of get in there without really a lot of notice, which would be, um, you know, opposite of I think a lot of things we're fighting for. Especially, I saw, um, you know, I think uh, looking at uh, on your website, um, before we get into kind of more maybe the the state level, we're talking a little bit about ledge day, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I saw a, in terms of oppose, support, and inform. Obviously, you know, opposing. Um, you know, Sam Carr in jail opposing rent control, just cause eviction, uh, point of sale maintenance, any kind of non growth movements and transfer taxes, right? Um, and, and kind of general terms, um, supporting tenants and housing rights, right? Um, safe, fair, affordable housing, um, incentives, right? Encouraging home ownership. And then, of course, informing where we've got a lot of stuff to inform on things like you just mentioned, but also climate, um, you know, climate policies, um, at home cost rebates, you know, posing mandates on, on the, I think you mentioned home electrification. Um, so uh, in terms of, you know, opposing and supporting, let's take a look at legislative day. I've now kind of moved to that state, that state level, right? Because um, there was a couple of things there. Now, so you guys go up there on, on every day, and I know you got, you went up with a lot of Sam Carr realtors there as well as other associations and their GATs, right? And met with some state legislators, I think Diane pa Pappen and Senator Josh Becker, uh, discussing kind of CAR hot issue legislation, right? That's right. Uh, Legislative Day occurs annually for all the associations in, in California, and Sam Carr is always happy to participate. Uh, we encourage our realtors to go up to Sacramento with us. It's an opportunity to, as you mentioned, to meet with uh, your state assembly member and your state senator. Uh, in this case, we're, uh, we had the privilege of meeting with uh, assembly member Diane Pappen, from our area, uh, as well as Senator, uh, State Senator Josh Becker. Um, one of the things that we talked to them about was coming back um, to um, the legislature, in particular to Gavin Newsom administration uh, regarding uh, the legislation that was passed previously, the year previous, that pro provided for a uh, down payment assistance program through the state, uh, the Dream for All Act. And uh, it was a uh, very well received um, uh, legislation that was uh, pushed by our state trade association, the California Association of Realtors. Um, at that time, the budget uh, monies that were allocated were uh, consumed pretty quickly. And at, the, at that time, uh, we were able to come back and encourage our local uh, delegation to uh, encourage um, their fellow members and the governor to um, reallocate funds for this very important program that helps uh, people, young people in particular, get into new homes here in California. It's an investment by the state and it's an opportunity for young people to uh, take advantage 
of a uh, um, an opportunity to utilize the down payment assistance program. So, and that's part of our mission here at um, um, our Sam Carr. That's we're about promoting homeownership. We're about not only protecting private property rights, but our goal uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, uh, to be at a voice uh, uh, for realtors in in San Mateo County. So. We're, we're happy to do that. We also talked about some pending legislation and um, just an opportunity, again, to build strong relationships with our local uh, state delegation. And that's very important for Sam Carr. Uh, it's important for us to build relationships at the local, state, and federal level with our elected officials. It's important for realtors to understand how uh, impactful a lot of this legislation can be. As a matter of fact, uh, 35% of all proposed legislation introduced in Sacramento each year impacts realtors. Uh, and that really amounts to you know, approximately about 2,000 bills every year, most of which uh, impact uh, our realtor liability. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's a wonderful opportunity every year to um, meet with our local delegation. Yeah, that's a, yeah, the DREAM Act, yeah, DREAM for All Act. Yeah, it is a critical bill, you know, pathway to homeownership, like you said. Uh, it's got an innovative down payment program. Uh, so definitely, you know, in terms of we're going to oppose and suppose or support, uh, one thing we did, I think you guys did oppose, was the Senate Bill 466, right, which would have had to do rent control on single-family homes, newly constructed apartments, condominiums. Um, and I know the rent control is always a big issue, especially in, in San Mateo County. Um, now that one, that one was defeated, right? Senate Bill four sixty six. Um, really, what we're talking about is the impact to Costa Hawkins, uh, which is now under assault uh, in Sacramento, and and it's important for our our realtors to familiarize themselves with such things as the Costa Hawkins and even Prop thirteen. Uh, as you know, Costa Hawkins Rental Housing Act is the law that restricts and preempts local rent control laws. So Costa Hawkins restricts and preempts local rent control in three ways. It exempts uh, a local rent control law from single family properties, as you alluded to, and individually owned condos, regardless of when they were built. It also exempts uh, from local rent control law on new construction built after 1984. And for those properties that are subject to rent control, it allows it does allow landlords to raise rents to market rate at the beginning of a new tenancy. But um, unfortunately, what we've seen recently is that uh, this type of um, you know, political issue has qualified for the November 2024 ballot. So again, it will pit um, such organizations as, as the California Association of Realtors and the California uh, Apartment Association um, against the proponents of such a um, ballot initiative. And it really, it, it doesn't add one unit of housing, right? Right. It, it, it just, um, they're coming back for the third time. Uh, voters in California have already rejected this. Um, it's it's a strong law that protects uh, single family homeowners. And that's why it's so important for single family homeowners and realtors um, and housing providers and property managers to really understand what's happening not only at the local level, but at the state level. Um, and that's just one thing that we're against. Uh, sure. You know, we're also against right now, we're fighting ACA-1, which is uh, a lower vote needed to approve infrastructure bonds. And currently our California Association of Realtors is opposed to this unless it's amended. And it's currently drafted to allow bonds for local infrastructure and housing to pass by 55% rather than two-thirds support by, by voters. And we're opposed to this because AC1, until it's limited to apply to only housing bonds, as passing uh, infrastructure costs will financially burden homeowners who are responsible for paying for potentially several bonds and infrastructure. So those are a couple of things that we're looking at at the state level, too. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, and, and regarding Coastal Hawkins, I mean, yeah, with that, you know, that basically local jurisdictions could could essentially pass ordinances, right? That that eliminate your right to set the rent at the market where, where there's a vacancy, right? If that went away, right? That's right, and um, it really is kind of the last uh, line of defense for homeowners. Uh, as you know, one of the things that Sam Carr has been involved in a lot recently um, 
is protecting housing providers as well. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about a couple of things that are happening locally. And uh, But this could extend to uh, homeowners. And um, that's why I said it's so important for all of us to to really know what's happening at the local and state levels. And uh, Costa Hawkins has been that last line of defense to uh, protect homeowners from rent control laws. Uh, and um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, so we've talked local, state. You know, I guess so you mentioned a few things. I guess what would be the, what would be the, well, you guys got probably have a few different things, but coming into 2024, it's going to be here soon, election year. Um, you know, just because some of these things were defeated doesn't mean they're not going to be right back on the ballot in 2024, right? That's right. Uh, we're currently working on a couple of uh, local issues with the city of Redwood City. Uh, prior to my coming on board here, uh, housing advocates and, and city staff had been working on uh, their uh, anti-displacement strategy and have uh, been working over the last couple, two or three years to make amendments to uh, that strategy. And one uh, that we're, we've actually uh, interjected Sam Carr and CAA in the process and said it's a very important for housing providers and realtors to have representation for Sam Carr and CAA to be at the table uh, when you're discussing uh, uh, local ordinances and amendments for those ordinances that will impact housing providers. So a couple of things that uh, city of Redwood City is looking at is ways to improve uh, relationships between um, tenants and housing providers. Uh, but they're looking at something called an anti harassment policy, which I think really uh, came out of COVID um, when uh, um, the state and federal governments um, came into um, the eviction issues and the uh, inability of uh, people to pay their rents on time. Um, uh, the housing providers also finally got into um, the discussion in terms of how can we help housing providers they also had to pay for mortgages. <clears throat> they also were incurring a lot of costs when their tenants were not able to pay for um, rents and they were not able to evict people. Um, and so uh, prior to COVID, I think, and during COVID, there were some claims of uh, uh, evictions and um, those type of things. But since COVID it, it, behind us, um, a lot of the claims are still coming in, but they don't have the data to uh, show it. So what we are, we're asking for is for a better data from the county and better data from the city, uh, because even through uh, staff's own acknowledgement, uh, a lot of those complaints and evictions have actually gone down. Uh, we encourage our housing providers to work with all available resources in San Mateo County to make sure that uh, evictions don't happen. And we, and we also encourage tenants to make use of all the available resources of, in here in San Mateo County. Another policy that they're looking at is giving renters the first right of return to a unit after substantial renovations. And um, we're at the table just making sure that uh, staff understands uh, what um, those renovations actually are and the costs incurred by housing providers and to come to some type of middle ground for tenants and housing providers. And as a matter of fact, at, at tonight's um, city council meeting in Redwood City, the Housing and Human Concerns is presenting their work plan to the council, which includes a suggestion to pursue a rental registry. And that's one of the, uh, the types of uh, policy proposals that uh, organizations like SAMCOR are traditionally opposed because it's a rent control type policy at the government intrusion in the market. And the council is asking to, uh, is being asked to approve the work plan so that staff can begin gathering more information and data on a rental registry so it can be brought back to the council at a future date. And what we're saying is that these type of rental registries really compel housing providers to uh, register their properties with the city. The city will gather information on rental property locations, owners and tenants, and we think that the cost of operating a rental registry uh, will impact the city's budget and staff time. Um, and any fee that's imposed, uh, potentially imposed on a housing provider will increase housing provider costs and may be passed on to the tenant, uh, driving up rents. Uh, these type of uh, rental registries are burdensome, create burdens 
paperwork and compliance costs that hurt mom and pop housing providers the most. And many could be forced uh, out of the market. There's also privacy concerns that uh, uh, could place housing providers and a city in uh, possible liability situations and legal trouble should there be data breaches. Um, and government interference, as I said, in the marketplace can only lead to more strict government controls uh, and like rent control measures, which, as we talked about, has been um, rejected by voters in San Mateo County. So, and then once again, um, no outreach has been uh, conducted to the most impacted constituency housing providers uh, by the commission. So, uh, you know, these are, again, uh, local uh, city issues that Sam Carr and uh, our coalition partners are looking to address and just making sure that staff and our elected officials uh, hear from our side and hear about our concerns in a respectful and considerate um, uh, manner. It, it's a it's important work. Uh, you're doing a fantastic job, Fernando, as well as Sam Carr. We really appreciate it. I guess I'll leave you the last word. Any, you know, uh, you know, obviously to get more realtors involved. I know you guys got a call to action on your website um, where a lot of you have a lot of articles about what's going on. So, you know, realtors can see, you know, the hot topics and what what's going on. Um, I'll give you the last word, I guess, um, uh, regarding that. Where, where can your realtor go to get more information? How can they you know, how can that really get involved? Sure, sure. Um, before I do that, can just do a quick shout out to the National Association of Realtors. I forgot to mention federal issues. And the House passed the Secure Notarization Act uh, this year to allow immediate and nationwide use of remote online notarization technology. So that's important. They also passed the Choice Arrangement Act, which was an NER supported association health plan act, providing access to association health plans. Uh, for more Americans, including uh, self-employed members like realtors. Uh, we've also been a co-sponsor of the More Homes on the Market Act, uh, the Neighborhood Homes Investment Act, um, and the Choice and Affordable Housing Act. So NAR has also been very busy protecting realtors at the national level. The one I really want to mention was the More Homes on the Market Act, which incentivizes um, homeowners to sell their homes by increasing the maximum amount of capital gains a homeowner can exclude on the sale of their principal residence and annually adjust it for inflation because that wasn't, uh, those provisions were put in there when the original act was uh, first passed. So shout out to uh, NAR. But yeah, as far as um, working with our realtors for 2024, uh, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we, we first encourage everybody to register to vote, right? <laughs> to understand the, Realtor positions on candidates and issues. Here at Sam Carr, we have a local candidate recommendation committee where we actually vet local candidates. We interview uh, uh, folks who are running for council or running for re-election, mayors, council members, and of course the board of supervisors. And you're right, we we actually ask realtors to act. Um, you know, read the weekly uh, report uh, that comes out on. Um, on Tuesdays, when I, I give um, government affairs reports to our um, Tuesday marketing and tour meetings, um, read our, our the relay, which comes out every uh, Wednesday. We also have valuable information there about political issues, as well as uh, classes for realtors and uh, other important information. Uh, and then uh, we also encourage our, our members to be aware of um, red alerts that come out of CAR, our, our state trade association, on uh, state legislation where they're asking the local association to get involved in um, lobbies or lo local delegation. And also, again, uh, there we also get calls for action from the National Association of Realtors when there are some controversial uh, federal legislation. And as you mentioned, uh, participate in Legislative Day. It's a great opportunity to meet a local um, members uh, in the Assembly and State Senate and help us lobby on very important uh, state legislation. Exactly. And then uh, just pay attention to regional and local issues as we've talked about. And if they want, they can get involved. Uh, we have three local uh, government affairs committees, Peninsula, Coastside, and Pacifica. And then and, uh, if possible, if they can help us by uh, contributing to our uh, Realtor Action Fund, it's it's a great opportunity. It's a volunteer contribution that appears on their membership dues billing statement. It's an opportunity for 
for them to help us make a difference and the contributions go to pay for uh, our local CAR and our dues and the funds that are raised help us um, uh, to support candidates who are sympathetic to our uh, realtor issues and uh, help us uh, oppose uh, negative uh, local, state, federal legislation that could impact their business. Fantastic. Yes, yeah, so realtors out there, stay informed, get engaged. Uh, Fernando, once again, thank you so much to yourself uh, as well as the Sam Car for all you do. Um, and I tell you what, uh, you know, reach out to us. We'd love to have you back on as we come into the election year. I know there's going to be plenty to talk about. So uh, uh, there is. We, thank you so much, Dave. I really enjoyed. It. Thank you to our subscribers. Thanks for tuning in and uh, keep an eye out for future episodes, including uh, Fernando. I'm sure we're going to have you back. So thanks again, and everybody, take care and stay safe. <laughs>